G'day everyone, welcome back. Steve's Place Down Under. Today we're going to get the Sami Centauro 60 going. Try and get the engine going and it's got a flat tyre. I just, I just blew the tyre up and it went up. I thought it had a crack in the sidewall, but it's only out of the, the, where the bead seals, like the tyre seals on the rim. So I think if we, we get the engine going and pump it back up and roll it, it may even seal. If not, at least it'll be in the shed where we can work on it in the shade. For those of you who haven't seen, it's a V4 air-cooled diesel, hence the two exhaust pipes. Hasn't run since this time last year, October this time last year, because I've done a video on it to for something to post when we went overseas, and it's approaching 2 million views now, and it's, it's still one of the highest watched. I don't know why, but it is. So Put a battery in it. The start is not great. We'll have to cross it over and um, get her idling over. Then I'll pump the tyre up and see if it'll roll out of here, and we'll take her into the shed and do some jobs. Excuse me having the camera so close, there's another tractor right here and sort of the best view I can give you at the moment. got oil in it, we might just give her a warning and see what it does and everything else we want to do to we'll do up the shed so give her a bit of throttle there. See what she does. We got her in the shed, um, tried pumping the tyre up again, it didn't settle so it, it's leaking around the bead as well as there was a hole in the top which I put a plug in, I probably should have patched it inside but I might do that when it's off so we'll take the tyre off, I can't break the bead on the inside, we'll lay it down and clean it all up and try and just blow it back out and see what happens. I'd try me luck with a half inch gun but it's just not cutting it. That one was easy but the rest are tight so I'll have to get the three quarter one which I've misplaced so I'll have to settle for a bar. But I found something even better than a battery three quarter, I found an air one. So this should have the desired effect.
So, I reckon basically, clean that rust off her and put it back on. It's got some patches on the inside already, but I'll be better taking her right off and giving it a buff. It's just a bit of truck wash, it works okay. Probably not as good as what could happen. Okay, well, just discovered there's a fucking tube in there. Let's try and pump that up. Okay, so I got the tire off it. Um, I didn't realize down there that I was just pumping the tire up and there was a valve on the other side that went to a tube. So I was actually filling it up like a, uh, like a tubeless. And to be honest, it actually held more air than I thought being like that. It didn't have that many holes, but that's why it was leaking around the bead because it's never actually been sealed there. So I found this, but while it was off, I could still hear it hissing out, and there's a, there's a decent hole in that tube, but it just must have been sealed against the tyre. So I'll patch that hole and have a look for any others while it's out. I know it's pretty rusty, but rather than wait for one, it um, won't be the end of the world to change it now that the, the tyre and the rim will be clean. So I'll fix that, and then I'll, I'll uh, see if, run under the tap and see if there's any more. So I've got a patch on it. It's been on there for about half an hour now. Certainly no tyre repair bloke, but I've done plenty of patches, so I'm, I'm fairly confident with it. Just don't know about all this rust on here, whether we will scratch that off and start ripping more holes in it or what to do there, but I'll pump it up and see what's, if there's any more bubbles and um, see if we're going to use it or not. Except this on the tripod, forgive me for the shakiness, but I thought we were about to get a storm here. It's getting real humid and it's starting to get dark, so I got the tire off. I didn't film any of that. It was, I was swearing and cursing. There was that much rust, it was a bastard to get off. Sweating like a horse here, but anyway, I'll get the wire brush onto this rim, and while the tire's set, the tube's going off, we can get the tire back on. seconds, oh, I don't know, half a minute after I just turned that needle gun off, it just got darker again now. It's it's looking east. Just coming in from over the, the west there. It's got dark really quick. All right, everyone, the tyre's back on. I'm just trying to keep this episode a little bit shorter, but it, it may, may come into a well, it could even be a four part thing or I might keep it as one, I don't know yet, but the next thing I want to do is, I bought a cheap uh, injector tester off eBay now. I, I could have just hung it off the, the injector line itself, but I mean they didn't build it, so it's only cheaper, they didn't build it not to work, so it's going to give us an indication, so I'll pop them out now because it's it's never run properly in all the years I've, I've known it. Um, I've done all the, set all the valves. She does breathe heavy, but that's that's in or there. If we can just get her running, it's, we may even do a compression test with them out. As I said, the leak, the leak offline on top of the injectors, there's nothing coming out any of them, so, and it's still run. So it, to me, there's a problem straight up. So we'll blow it all down and pull them out and 
see if we can get that cheap machine to work and see what's going on with them. Set her up off camera just to just to bleed it and I suppose get the feel of how it works and everything and unbox it but it's cracking off about 3000 psi which to me sounds right but I guess I'll have to look at the spec but it's a pretty good pattern and I mean that that one appears to be working I'll show you in a minute but the next thing I guess is I mean we'll do the rest and then just hopefully the pumps putting out the same the same result as this tester so it's taken a lot see it going up to 3000 I didn't see that on the camera I've got it zoomed in right at 3000 it pops so Patterns are a little bit uneven, but I don't know. All you fuel bikes tell me, but I, I don't know. I think that's all right. Look, um, I still wouldn't mind stripping them down and seeing why there's no fuel coming out here because that's an actual loop 
It's only burnt between two of them, but if any one of them are going, like it, it should, it should show in that where where it's burnt through. So I don't know why that is. Um, to me, if they're getting lubricated properly, that they pop it in there, and it, it should be leaking through that. But again, let me know your thoughts on that. But I'll go through and do them all. I'll show you. I don't know what, what cylinder this is. I just pulled them out of the right hand side, so. I'll go through and get another one out and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how they go. sound like one side of the engine is running different to the other so you know there's still two left so we'll try those ones and hopefully there's a result there somewhere I reckon this is still in the one the way that it's the furthest head forward on on, on this v-type engine so not that this is going to matter but not that one benchmark and I reckon I reckon they're all pretty good so well, I guess the thing to do now would be maybe hang them off the pump and see what it's doing or compression test it might have a burnt valve might have a hole in a piston I don't know it's a little bit off topic but for those of you interested in a bit of Australian wildlife and some down there on the lawn just had a big storm come through as you've seen and now they're chasing the green grass. When you cut it, they, they love it. We've got some deer that come through here and um, wallabies and kangaroos. I think there's five there I can see, but they just caught my eye when they popped back into the into the view here. Some of you may be interested. Since since Roger's gone, they my little white dog. They uh, used to chase after them all, but now they're getting a bit game and coming back. The, the other black dog, Baby, she doesn't bother them. There's something cool for those of you who are interested. It's hard to get the camera to focus in on the on the square to hang in there, but I've just bent one of the lines so I could see it from over here at the starter. Because I've got a cross it. Just see what the. I'll just swap it over to each port on the pump and see what she does. Just from. She, the rack should be in full position anyway. Give her another game here. Oh, it'll look beautiful. It's got to be compression. Got to have a piston out or a bloody burnt valve or something. I don't know that I've got a diesel compression tester here. I've got a petrol one, but it needs to be twice the compression these things, if not more. So I'll either get one or just run her how she is and pull her down when we've done the job. Certainly needs the heads and barrels pulling off her. And <coughs> got severe blow by anyway that may be the problem but it never had that and it always ran like this so I guess just do all the other work to it and she, she's always pushed hard how it is but 
just good to have it performing properly and put it back together and, and uh, do the rest of the work on her I suppose. Hey, good morning everyone, I'm back on the Sami Centauro here. <clears throat> the other day you saw me bleed the injectors, I'm just trying to pick up where I was from this a few days ago. Bleeding the injectors, so I put them back in, um, I didn't film that but went to start it and I wound over a couple of times and then it just stopped and the solenoid started clicking in and that stopped clicking in sorry and, and and the starter was hot so I pulled it off and there was a there was one spring rusted right off and there was one brush that the lead runner did was burnt out so because this had been sitting outside so long that starter end cap was half full of water and well it had, had been you could see the rust line and it, it, it wrecked one of the springs holding the brush against the against the contact and then the other one was burnt out so it was only touching two brushes so how it ever went I don't know maybe it just burned out trying to start it when I put them injectors back in so I took it to took the brush plate to a mate of mine <coughs> excuse me who is a sparky he had another spring there and he and he put a new brush in it for me because I didn't have any unless I pulled the starter apart and, and another old one and and was lucky enough to have it all fit and then that solenoid I picked it apart because they're pressed together. Um, picked all the end out of it, took the Bakelite end cap out of it and cleaned the contacts in it so you had to, had to unsweat the solder and, and pick the end out of it. Pulled it apart, cleaned all the contacts and then tapped it all back together and, and sealed it up. So it's now working great. It's not working off the dash though so I don't know. In there you can see the ignition barrel, which hasn't got a key, but this this nail used to just push in and it opened the, whatever it did and the dash lights had come on, but they're not doing that now. So just crossing it with a screwdriver does work. <coughs> it's not ideal, but it does work. So anyway, the engine's running as good as it ever used to. Still got the blow by, obviously, um, but it always produced good power. It pushes well, especially in the lower gears. It always made plenty of power to do the job. It's just just fumey and just just not sounds right but anyway so the engine's going as good as it's going to be until I own it I bled the power steering up it seems to be working okay not it tightens up just before full lock again it's not ideal but it may bleed from doing a bit of lock to lock with it might may get the air out of it because it was empty so not empty but enough to enough to be getting air into it um, so dad and myself have been working on making this blade tilt i fixed all the tires they're all up they're holding air so i found this old cylinder I, I collect stuff out of you know people giving stuff away or scrap metal bins or been to a few uh brickyards now that have been cleaning off their shells when they've closed down and and all well, this stuff was going in the scrap so i've got a cylinder here it works with air on the bench it does bypass a little bit but I guess when it's full of oil it may seal, we'll soon tell, um, if not I'll just buy a, a generic cylinder to fit what we're making, so these sort of cylinders aren't that expensive, especially an eBay one, so I was contemplating on laying it parallel along the top there, but after some discussion with Dad I thought well it'll probably have more power pushing up and down, so this blade does tilt, as I said, it's got a center pin which you can't see, but it's got these wedges too, so that's just to, you tighten those wherever you want it, and you can see it does roll, so that's that's telling me it has got a center pin. Um, so we, what, what I'm gonna try and do is leave those loose, just oil or grease all that up, just leave them enough to, to hold hold it together still, but just, just release it a little bit, maybe put a lock nut there so it, so it uh, holds it there. Then we're going to make this cylinder push from here to there. Um, in theory, it should work. <clears throat> so we've cut all the steel. We took a. I've got a David Brown 1200 tractor down the back, which is all seized up. But Dad come up with the idea we get the the ball off the end of the three point linkage. So we took one of those arms off because they're the same either end and um, we're going to use that but it's, it's too wide to go in that, in that clevis there so 
I cut them off, they can be used for something else, but we're going to use the steel out of it anyway because it's just fantastic. So it's just heavy, it's heavy enough for what we want to do. That hole will just have to open up a bit more for the pin in that cylinder. Um, that one also, and I just split it through there because I want to bend it, so I've cut it most of the way through. We'll bend that, then I'll weld it back up to where I need it. It'll still be plenty strong enough, and weld it all onto the blade here to mount that cylinder. So it's the blade straight now, so I've measured it, measured the cylinder travel, then halved it. So where it's sitting now is half travel, so which will give you equal tilt either way. And I got an eBay control valve. I've got old ones here, but they're too rusted. So this was, I think, $75 and we had to pick it up from the local post office just off eBay. So we'll mount that on the guard there somewhere comfortable. And the hoses, we're going to have to, I've got to find a hydraulic pressure point here somewhere. So the blade now works off this lever. So that valve would have to have pressure in it. There's a couple of plugs in there, so I might drop them out and put a gauge or just a tub under it and see, see if any of them pump oil out while she's winding. And we've got to take a, a hose from here to that valve. These will both now become blade up and down, so they'll have to be rerouted to that valve. And then we'll have to run two more for the tilt. And one back out of here. It's going to be a bit messy up on the guard, but she's not for looks, it's to do a job, so... One from this side, I think, tank, yes. Just back to the transmission anywhere we can get it. So the transmission is the hydraulic oil in these. So the hoses, we're not going to spend any money. We're going to try not to. I've got old hoses laying here everywhere. So whether we've got to weld some fittings together or these aren't high pressures, you're not talking 4,000 PSI like a cat machine, you just, I don't know, maybe 1,200 or something. It's, it's fairly fairly slow, all of this, so it's, it's not as dangerous. So if we've got to weld fittings together, to, rather than buy stuff, we'll, we'll do that. Found some old tilt hoses off a of Kenworth cab ram. Maybe long enough. Um, if not, we can join them. We've got a heap of reusable fittings and, some, and a roll of hose out there, which may work. You may have to skive it, which you don't really do anymore with hoses, but... Well, not here, but if it's going to work, well, that's what we're going to do, so. And the other thing is the cutting edge. The centre part of this is gone. It all just actually bent, so we're not going to put it back on. I've got a old one out of the steel bin from the workshop here. It's off a uh, 140H Caterpillar grader, 14... 14 foot blade, so that, that'd be a seven foot edge. We're just gonna trim it down to fit in there. We'll probably just weld it to the, the existing edges and just a couple along the top. Um, if you don't back blade, it should be, should be fucking perfect, really. Um, unless we lift it right up and put a couple of stitches underneath. But So we'll get back to fabricating this. Okay, we've got to sort of, it's all tacked together anyway, that the actual frame's welded, but it's only tacked to the blade. Um, it all looks okay, it's not amazing, but it doesn't have to look amazing, it was just to do a job, so I think I'll go ahead and weld it now. We're not going to be able to tell if it works until it's welded with, with some strength behind it, so get it welded up, then I'll, I guess I'll try and hose it up, try and find some hoses or whatever we can, and make something fit. Just put a gusset in here because that's only welded out here. So brace it back to the, the blade itself. Anything more than that's going to be a help. It's going to be a lot stronger. Okay, we've got it all well, it's, it's welded up, but until I brace it, um, it's only tacked there. It's enough to see if it works. I'll fully weld that. I just want to see if this gap closes up here too much. If not, we'll have to move that away or do something with that. That's why that's only tacked, but there's enough strength there to see if it's all going to move. Um, 
hose has now found enough fittings. I had a roll of this, which is, it is air brake hose, but it's, I mean, it's wire hose and it's rated at, it says 2250 PSI on there, so it's two, over 2000 PSI, so I don't think this tractor would go to that. Um, it may, but time will tell. We'll have to, we'll, we'll bottom it out and see what does happen. So those reusable ends are all off the blue Kenworth of mine. When I first did it, I um, had some leftover hoses of ones I changed to just hydraulic lines, so they're, they're off it. So that they actually fitted that hose very nicely. So we've run them, we've rerun the ones for the lift cylinder. So they're all coming through here now. They're all different lengths because they the lift cylinder ones are in the other side so um, we'll bunch all them together once we know it works and probably just wrap some I don't know some rubber or put them all in a in a radiator hose or something so if they do pop it it'll just shoot out either end and, and arrest it and so it's not going all over the bloke on it we found a pressure port <coughs> From this valve here, I think I just wound the engine over and that one there. So rather than touch the lever, it's it's just going through this valve now, and I've got the return, which is a fuel line off one of the old Kenworth wrecks down the back. It's probably a pretty good length. It comes down around. I'll have to rerun it, but it's coming up into here, so it's got to return back into this housing. So the only downside of that is the dipstick goes in there, but. We'll get the right length after we bleed it. That's why it's just sitting in there at the moment. And then we'll, uh, I'll screw this in and, of course it breathes through. It's got a breather anyway, so. That's a dipstick and a breather, but it's, it's got another one there. So I'm, I'm confident that'll work. Um, haven't tightened the levers yet. So dad's going to get some hydraulic oil from a drum down, keep down the back. And we'll, we'll have to bleed all these and We'll video that. I didn't video a lot of the hose making and everything. It's um, just to try and keep it a bit shorter. So once he gets back, we'll top that tank up. We'll run the engine up and probably crack some of these lines down on the cylinders and see what she does. Probably have to swap a few over. The, 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 they'll go a different. It may be right, but I'd say at least one of them will go the wrong way. But it's just a matter of swapping the hoses around. So. When he gets back, we'll do that. See what happens with this lever. See if it does anything at all. See if it's right. See, just see what happens. So here we go. through the remotes because 
the pressure port I thought was just a return from when the three point linkage was going up so it had no pressure behind it at all so it bled the lines but that was all it did so we'll try her again about to go flat I think she just ran out of diesel too that's fine it's all working a couple of small leaks some of these fittings are sitting you know, brushed on them so that's probably why oiling this up it'll it'll eventually wear all the all the dirt out from behind it and maybe tomorrow we'll um that's this all needs bracing again but, so maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll get her up in the bush tie these hoses up and see what she does we're going to weld that cutting edge on first Okay, so it's the next morning. I've come over earlier um, so I can finish this job. I've got other things to do, but you see I've just added this brace in here. I'm only using gasless wire, but it's it's plenty strong enough. There's plenty of penetration there. Just That's just stopping that flexing. Um, what I'm gonna do now is just tie some hoses up out of the way. Another job done, and then we'll put that cutting edge on and she's getting pretty close to use, really. Some of these hoses are a bit long, we're just going to have to lose them. 
where we can probably in the front there we can loop out the side or behind the blade or something just got to go and find some more cable ties i think i've run out okay got all the hoses tied in i think they're all pretty good length actually the ones we made were made to length obviously but the other ones they, they we lost them pretty well are a bit longer fairly confident with all this but it, probably a guard wouldn't hurt it's not running big pressure but still if it spikes through the cylinder or something and blows out it could be be sort of dangerous so they're all tied up made that bracket there off that bolt just to hold them up off the axle as it oscillates all pretty good you just see that loop there is where there's two loops there is where I've lost the length there they won't be in the way I don't think um, let's put the cutting edge on again it's a worn out one off out of the steel bin off a 140h cat grader but it was a seven foot edge so I've trimmed it off see how much I took off it there had that here for years actually it used to be a stiff bar to push one of these tractors in the shed here the bulldog I think so I'm going to put the air cleaner back on it now we cleaned that oil bath out um, Dad's going to get some diesel for it because it ran out yesterday as you saw she stopped herself has got a leak around the PDO shaft which is obviously getting worse but I don't know of days work that it's going to do we'll fix it after that or the engine's worn out anyway so i'll just have to tie that hose up actually and i think we'll go and give her a go i'm going to get one of those balls for the steering wheel now you i think i've got one somewhere and we'll bleed her up and give her another go take her up in the bush and see if she works okay we've got to fuel up um i bled it to the pump so I haven't cracked any injector lines, I'll just give her a wind and see if she does squeeze it through. If not, I'll throw the bonnet back over and, and bleed them at the injectors.
the brakes on her and pedal's nearly right down and she's only just pulling up and sort of using, leaving her in forward and using the clutch to slow it down most of the time. You see she's very fumy too, the motor's completely worn out but she's still producing power and I guess, I don't know, extend that breather or wear a mask or I, I don't know but it's doing the job if you just don't really want to be breathing it in, it's not a good thing. But that worn out. Still makes enough power, it's just probably not good health wise. It comes, it comes good. It's just when it's free revving like this. A couple of blokes did suggest in the comments that it, it, it'll come good after working it, but we we used to plough with it on that property across the road there, like all, all that over there, and it never ever came good. In fact, I think it got worse. But 